Hello and welcome to our channel. We live full time in a Class A RV and it's time we shared an update video about our internet solutions. Last year for Audrey's birthday, we went to a T-Mobile store to check out their home internet. And we think it's one of the best decisions we've ever made. Steven has always been kind of an internet nerd. In our old house, we had a fiber optic connection that had gigabit speeds both up and down. His Xbox regularly saw up and down speeds of around 600 megabits per second. Losing that speed was one of the hardest things we had to learn how to live without. Our first month living full time, we used a tablet with a firewire attached to our TV. It was slow, laggy, and oftentimes whatever we were watching would just frustratingly freeze. I also went out and purchased a jetpack device from Verizon for my Xbox. The biggest limitation of that was 140 gigabit data limit. After we hit that, our speeds on that device would drop below what was required to use it for the purpose of gaming. Which means that we couldn't update games or use the jetpack for anything else other than my Xbox. Even then, with all the online racing that I do, we were using almost every bit of that data every month. In the next few months, Steven changed cellular carriers because of his disappointment with Verizon speeds. While they were just fine before we made the move into the RV, the data we needed to stream and post videos was too overwhelming for their network where we were living. We also bought some Wi-Fi range extenders and had been mooching off of our friend's internet to watch TV and post videos. With the range extenders, a jetpack, tablets, and phones on three different cell phone carriers, we were still struggling to upload videos some nights. It would not be uncommon for a 15 to 20 minute video to take over two hours or more to upload. Last year, Starlink was still emerging on the market. It wasn't available in an RV package yet, and the equipment prices and the monthly service charge were out of our budget. But then we saw a video about T-Mobile's home internet packages. It seemed like if we could get that, it might just solve most of our problems. With unlimited data caps and data speeds advertised at over 100 megabits per second, we were definitely interested. It didn't come without some drawbacks and some risks though. It's not available everywhere, and also, it's not designed for mobile use. We weren't just gonna be able to walk into the store, tell them we lived in an RV, and ask for our magic internet box. With that in mind, we headed to the store on my birthday with an address that allowed us to sign up for the service. We got our T-Mobile black internet box, brought it back to the RV, and hooked it all up. For the most part, it was pretty straightforward. We had trouble with our Mac connecting to its Wi-Fi, but we will get to that in a minute. We've had the service for six months now, we have traveled across state with it, boondocked with it, stayed in small towns with it, and it has almost never let us down. Our speeds are usually over what was advertised, and instead of taking hours to upload, it takes just minutes. Increasing our creativity and productivity. It runs two Xboxes, two Mac computers, phones and tablets for two people. We live stream, enjoy online gaming, run small businesses, and of course, produce for multiple YouTube channels. We have touched on a few of the pros already. It doesn't have data limits at all that we have noticed. We can run all of our devices and usually will never notice a speed drop. It's only $50 a month, which is cheaper than what we ever paid for cable internet. Its speeds are almost always more than what was advertised. And in small towns, we get faster speeds than who we're staying with. That's because T-Mobile actually has a pretty big network now that rivals AT&T and Verizon. We haven't had a chance to take it down south, and we know it has limitations, but so far, we haven't found them. Well, we shouldn't say that, because like anything, it does have some cons. But so far, all of them have been manageable, and overall, we really love the service. The first problem we had was right away, and that is the location you place this in is very important. We wanted to run Ethernet from Steven's Xbox, but where we had space to do that, it had almost no signal. Also, for whatever reason, our Mac just would not connect to its Wi-Fi. It would say it was connected, but wouldn't load any websites. Our solution was to move the T-Mobile box to the highest point we could next to the picky Mac and plugged it in directly. Problem solved. We've also noticed that while traveling, we have great speeds, but when we get to our destination and get all parked up, all of a sudden our speeds can drop and nothing wants to load. Our solution is to just reset the box by unplugging it for a minute. It restarts with a new IP address and we're all good again. Sometimes in bigger cities during peak hours, you'll also notice a little bit of a slowdown, mostly while watching video or gaming. It's usually pretty brief though. We've actually created our own problems with the service as well. We loved the service so much, we started talking about it with everyone. 
One of our friends who drives truck went out and got one too, which is awesome, until he brought his box over and left it plugged in. Then all of a sudden, our super fast internet hit the floor. Anytime he came over, our speeds would tank and sometimes even after he left, we would struggle to get them to recover. When our speeds dropped like that, it sucked because they were so fast until they weren't. Towards the end of our stay there, sometimes we would struggle to get content loaded because of it. Our solution was pretty simple because we're mobile and are in a new location where we don't talk about our beloved internet as much. Honestly, we aren't sure why the service started to drop off and we were kind of hoping that when we go back, it has recovered. Hey, want to help us out? Subscribe to our channel. It's totally free and it would really bring us joy. Then click the bell notification so you know when we have a new video up. Thanks. One of the last drawbacks has probably been one of the most annoying, but only because we are gamers. If you want this service and don't do any gaming at all, you will likely never even notice this. T-Mobile's internet uses a public net, and it doesn't have any options for customizing your network, for any port forwarding, or setting up static IP addresses. This is probably fine for most users, but your net is what enables you to use Microsoft's Party Chat, and for racing games, it's also something that can be pretty important if you don't like getting repeatedly kicked from the lobbies. Without getting too complicated, your net is how gaming systems find you and confirm your presence in a game. Port forwarding is usually the easiest way to open your net, but because T-Mobile doesn't have an option in its software or in its hardware really, there's no way to stop the traffic from being blocked before it gets to your modem. I spent some time on the phone with customer support on this one. Their solution was to connect a gaming router to the modem and do your port forwarding there. The problem is that the traffic is blocked before it gets to the modem. So assigning ports that information won't get to doesn't help. There are VPN services that allow port forwarding, but they are complicated to use and most of the time require an additional monthly charge for the service. We wrestled with this one for a while but we have found a solution. We still have strict public net, but now our party chats and the race lobbies don't just randomly drop for no reason. What I ended up having to do is manually enter all of my internet settings into the Xbox. I started by setting a static IP on the one Xbox. I put in the manual DNS server address, and I also manually put in the port I wanted all of my traffic forwarded to. Then, I reset my Xbox and my modem at the same time and made sure that the Xbox was the first thing to connect. Since doing that, we have stayed fixed and gaming is enjoyably fast again, even with the strict net. So, our final thoughts on it? We love it and are generally really happy with it. The gaming net was very frustrating, but once we figured out how to get around it, it's been great. We have recommended it to others, but in the future, if we run into interference, we might just let someone borrow ours rather than have the two compete. The price is more than fair for the speed we have, and we love being able to take it with us. We wish it were a little easier for nomads to get, as we have heard of other people that haven't been able to use it with such great success. There are other mobile carriers opening up home internet, so we are hoping the prices and coverage stay competitive for consumers. It's smart to still have backup plans, because living in an RV, you're not always guaranteed a great signal. We hope this has helped you. If you're living a nomadic lifestyle, it's definitely a very cost-effective service with Wi-Fi speeds that can rival satellite and cable internet services. We hope we get to use it for many more years to come.